and radio a trucker or something with this thing, I think. <laughs> Talk some CB language. Or... But I can feel his presence in this place. Let me tell you, it, it doesn't matter if, if we all show up and, we, and, we, and you know, we go through the motions, we have a good time, and we can feel the goosebumps or whatever. But when he is here, when he is here, it makes all the difference in the world. We leave changed. Amen. We don't, come, we don't leave the same way we came in. That would be a prayer every week is you don't leave the same way that you came in. We're all a work. You may be a little bit further than I, but I'm going to tell you what. I need Jesus. You need Jesus. And I don't, you know, I praise God. I'm not where I used to be. But praise God, he's got me on the way of where he wants me to be. Amen. So we bless his name. We bless his name this morning. This morning, Pastor calls and he's, or texts me. Like I said, it's got to be pretty bad if uh, he's, he's not here. And, uh, but uh, he said, I need you to preach this morning. I said, okay. <laughs> so um, I'm going to share what, with you this morning what I believe is a word of the Lord. The uh, Bible says be instant in season and out of season. Don't pay attention to the way it's delivered, but God has something that he wants to speak to each and every one of us this morning. If you are here, you are not here by accident. You didn't just feel like coming to church. And Guess what? There's a tug of the Holy Spirit. There's a work of the Holy Spirit that's, that's way behind the scenes. So if you're here, God has got you here on purpose this morning. It's to hear his word this morning. So we are, uh, pastor's been preaching a series and talking about that we're in a spiritual fight. How many believe that? We're in a spiritual battle. And we've been uh, from the context of Ephesians chapter 6. And uh, right there before um, he, excuse me, but right there before the writer talks about putting on the armor of God, which we need to have the armor of God. But I want to read, he probably will have it on the screen too, Javi, uh, Ephesians. I'm going to flip over real quick. Ephesians chapter 6. Um, Y'all, if you have your Bible, if you have your electronic device, you can go there. We're just going to touch on those couple of verses that Pastor has been preaching from there in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10, 11, and 12. Uh, 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And first of all, right there in verse 10, we've got to know, and I'm sure we do, we've got it up here sometimes, but translating from here to here is, is, the, is the breaking point. Is we've got, it says, be strong in the Lord. It's going to take the Lord. You and I on our best day are not going to win a fight. I've tried. I've tried with words. I've tried with fleshly uh, attempts at things. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're faced with a problem, how many of you are, are good about trying to help God do his job sometimes? And, and it, my plan never works out. You know, it usually is sabotage. I may get a little bit of ground before it, it crashes. But, ev you know, inevitably, if it's not God's plan, in his gracious loving kindness, he's going to allow it to fail because he's got a better plan for us. So... We have to realize that in this fight, in this uh, spiritual battle that we're in, first of all, it's, we get, our strength comes from the Lord. It's not us. It's totally in Him and in the power of His might. Verse 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may, able, may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. In the New King James it says wiles. Um, that word wiles is devious and cunning, manipulative strategy of the enemy. He doesn't play fair, right? We're facing an enemy right now, um, and definitely not going to get into what, but you know you if you've even turned on the news or you see what's in society, there's not a fair and unfair here. There's not really even a right and wrong when you're looking at it from, from a, a spiritual point of view. It's just that there's a devious, cunning, manipulative enemy that is fighting, and he hadn't, he hadn't went on vacation, Right? So he's out to destroy us. We have to have the power of, of his Holy Spirit 
Uh, we've got to put on the armor of God to, to keep us from the schemes of the evil one. And then verse 12, where Pastor is taking us on a journey here these last few weeks. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. And we see it happening. This is not a physical battle that we're in. We are in a spiritual battle. So if we are in a spiritual battle, there has to be some spiritual strategy from the Lord, from the Lord that of how we get victory, how we win this fight. Amen. We can't we acknowledge we can't do it in our flesh, but what are some some strategies from the Holy Spirit? So I want to give you some this morning out of the word of God that you can do practically and you can do physically, but it's a spiritual act and a, a spiritual weapon to defeat the enemy. And I also want to add this too, is God wants us to be a victorious people. We, um, as we progress in our Christian walk, Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, when we meet corporately, we should not, I mean, don't get me wrong, we have our bad days, right? But if I come in here week after week after week, I'm like, pastors ask me, how you doing, Jonathan? I'm like, well, I got my brains beat out again this week. I got my, you know, it's... It's, it's been a bad week, whatever. It's like, I understand there's going to be some days and there's going to be some times, but the Lord wants us to be victorious. He's called us to be victorious people because of who we're representing. God's not a loser. Amen. If we have the Holy Spirit in us, he's caused us to win. Ultimately, we know we win. Anybody read the back of the book? You kind of you cheated a little bit. You read the back. You see we win, but the devil... Uh, wants us to be defeated on a daily basis. The Lord wants us to be victorious on a daily basis. Amen? How much better is it to walk in victory than to just feel like you're getting your brains totally beat out? And let me add this to it, too, is I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to know is you don't ha everything around you don't have to be going good. You see on the outside what's going on, whatever. It don't have to be good what we see with our natural eye for the Lord's truth of you being a victorious person or us walking in victory to manifest. So our, our victory is not dictated by what's going on around us. Amen. Can you say praise God for that, right? Amen. So where we're going to take our context this morning is flip over, if you will, if you've got your Bibles, and I asked Javi to put it on the screen too, um, 2 Chronicles. It's in the Old Testament, chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20, it's closer to the beginning, Old Testament. And we're just going to read through this. Um, it's, a, it's a story here in the Old Testament of where uh, Jehoshaphat, he was uh, in his fourth year of being king. Uh, he was anointed king roughly about the age of 35 years old. Uh, he's from the descendants of Judah. And there, he, previously in Kings, he's been called to go to war. He's won victories. They, they even call him a warrior. But he comes upon a, a situation here to where the Ammonites and the Moabites, two other tribes, are coming. And he's done got word that they're coming to destroy him. He's responsible for all these people there in the tribe of Judah. So he is, is coming forth uh, before a, a what's a potential a big battle, a big fight. And if you read into it before and into it, it's just what you see in the natural eye with what the Moabites have and the Ammonites and the size of his. Okay, there's no way in the natural that they're going to pull this out. It's just it's what's before them is a big fight, and it looks, it's looking pretty grim. He's scared. So we're going to read through this. And we're going to point out some things, too, and, and dig out those nuggets of some uh, spiritual strategy, strategies for the spiritual fight that we're in. Starting in verse 1, and I'm going to read out a New Living Translation, but I'm going to bounce back and forth uh, to the King James on some things I want to point out, the wording. 
But verse 1, after this, the armies of Moabites, Ammonites, and some of the Menunites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. They're already at Hazan Tamar. Uh, this was another name for En Gedi. Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. Now, over there in the King James, that verse 3, it says, And Jehoshaphat feared, he was terribly afraid, and he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed to fast through all Judah. So first of all, realizing right off the bat, Jehoshaphat, he's, he's not trying to be super macho man or anything, and he's scared. He's responsible. It's not only just him. It's for, for his kingdom there. Um, but he is scared. He's honest. He's feared. But the first thing right on the curtail that is, it says, he set himself to seek the Lord. Look, I'm going to tell you, we're faced with some real stuff sometimes, and we don't negate the fact that sometimes it's right in our face, and we, we see in flesh and blood. And sometimes you want to strangle flesh and blood. Or go after flesh and blood. But right here, Jehoshaphat, it, it was like, I'm scared. I see it coming, but I seek the Lord. Let me tell you something, church. We've got to get back to the very first thing, no matter what, is seeking the Lord. Okay? And don't, don't hang on, don't shoot me on this one too. But, but like in the area of needs, financial needs, healing, bondage, stronghold, it's not medication, then the Lord. It's not try to fix it myself, and then if that don't work out, the Lord is plan B. Seeking the Lord has to be plan A. And guess what? There's no plan B. We seek the Lord until we get an answer. I am a very impatient person, and my wife can attest to this. Big time. We pull up at a fast food restaurant or something like that. I don't even want to wait the five, six minutes. What, you know, they call this fast food? No, no. It, I'm, I'm a little bit impatient at times. Anybody sympathize with that or relate to that? Okay. But I tend to, even in the things of God, if I don't watch it, I'm the same way. It's like even if I get to the place of like something happens, I'm faced with, with something, I seek the Lord, and if I don't get an answer and 30 minutes, or a day, or a week, or whatever it may be, then I start trying to figure out how I can fix it, or how I can rearrange the situation. If we're honest, we're probably all like that. That's just kind of how we're made up a little bit. But we have to get back to a place of like the old church, like, listen, I'm thankful for the luxuries and what we have today, but some of this is like back when all it was was Jesus, and you had to believe for Jesus for the next Meal, you had to believe in Jesus. We got to get back to that. This don't, this don't take away from the fact that we have to seek the Lord. We have to trust in Jesus for everything. Everything. Seek the Lord. Picking up verse 4. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. So he didn't just see, you know, get away in a quiet place by himself. It says right there, he gathered all the people together to seek the Lord. Verse 5, Je Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah and Jerusalem in front of the new courtyard at the temple of the Lord. He prayed, O Lord God of our ancestors, you alone are God who is in heaven. You are the ruler of the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. O our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when your people Israel arrived? And did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. They said, whenever we are faced with any calamity, such as war, plague, or famine, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name honored. Now, we're going to go back and read that verse 9 real quick. But before we get that, it's like he is sitting here and he's reminding God of all his promises. He's reminding God of all he's done. And guess what? God is like, cool with that. If we remind God, like, God, I know, you know, I come into a situation and I come to a, uh, to a place where I'm in a fight and I need victory. I'm going to remind God, like, I know you, God. I know you're powerful. I know you can do it. You've been faithful. 
you did it back then. I don't believe you stopped working miracles. You're going to work a miracle today just like you worked a miracle back then. You can win. You know, you fought my battles before, and I've come in, you, you know, you didn't get here with a, a, a paved smooth road tiptoeing through the tulips. You've been through some things. You can remind God, and he, he's a big God, and he's, you know, remind him of his blessings. Remind him of his promises and how faithful he is. And then right there in verse 9, tell me this don't ring home with where we're at today. If disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, it says uh, calamity, plague, famine, it says, we can come to stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. Let me tell you, there's a lot going on. We've got the plagues. We've got the pandemics. We got, but look, God is so good. He's brought us this far. He's not going to let us go right now in the middle of 2020. He didn't take us this far uh, to drop us off and then him go take vacation. God is faithful. Guess what, too? 2020 is not over with. Last time I checked, we're fixing to enter October. There's a, a, a back quarter here. of uh, It's not like what, what else could go wrong in 2020, right? Praise the Lord. I'm, I want to have the attitude of, like, what's God going to do in 2020? Like, October, November, December, what if God brings revival right here? to Gateway Church, to Ashton City. Come on. Let's not live in the defeat of what the enemy wants us to. You know, our mind just kind of all goes to that negative junk. Hey, it's real. I get it. I mean, it affects all of us some way or another. But my God is so much bigger. That song said, the God on the mountain was the God in the valley. He... He don't, he's not brought us this far to let us go. Amen. That's good news. And we have this place. I'm, I'm partial to this place. This is, uh, this is our temple, so to speak. God has blessed us with a place to where we can come. It says in the middle of everything, the pestilence, the, the disease, the chaos, politics, anything you want to name. Like he's brought us to this place to where we can worship in his presence. It doesn't take these four walls. I get that because I have some good moments with God driving down the road in a, in a vehicle. I have some church sometimes driving down the road on my way to work or on the way back home from work. Uh, Jared, he called me, the, uh, texted me the other day. I put him on the spot. He's like, in the middle of the day, I get a text. It's like one, two o'clock. And he's like, I am messed up. I said, what are you talking about? He's like, I've been in tears. Everybody around me from at work thinks I'm a weirdo. He goes, but the presence of God has been on me so strong today, and the Lord's been speaking. He's having church at work. Go figure. And he works, he works with some pretty, some worldly, some good professionals. Of, uh, I mean, I used to be a professional sinner, too. I, uh, but, but you know I'm getting that. But you can have church. I'm thankful for this place. I'm thankful that it doesn't take this place as well. But he says, I, the, there in the scripture says, we can stand here. We have a place in the temple that we can come and worship and, and, and be in your presence and get recharged and get with others too that, that you know, Ricky over here may be going through something and, uh, and have a victory in it. So I need to pair up with Ricky. But, you know, when I come into this place, because he can, he's like, guess what God's done for me? Amen? So we have this place that will help us. Okay, so back. Picking up in verse 10 there. And now, see what the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir are doing. You would not let our ancestors invade those nations when, when Israel was left to Egypt. So they went around them and did not destroy them. So he's just telling God, he goes, we had a chance back here. But you asked, you know, we obeyed the Lord. It says, now see how they reward us, for they have come to throw us out of your land, which you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. We do not know what to do, but we are looking to you for help. Again, we have to come to the end of ourselves when on the spiritual battle 
and realize that we can't do it. He says we're powerless. I have had what, what would be called eye problems. The church has had eye problems. I can do this. I can do that. I've tried this. I've tried that. Look, I heard, who was it, uh, not too long ago, they said, they said man, you know, they're talking to a lost person. He said, man, you just use Jesus as a crutch. Yes, sir. Because I'm broken and I need somebody to lean on to carry me. We have, look, we're, if we could drive one point home today, it's like we ain't going to fix it. We ain't going to fix it. We've got to come to the place where, just like Jehoshaphat, we're powerless, but we're looking to him. He says, I'm looking to you for help. As all the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, wives, and children, the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name was Jehazel, son of Zechariah, son of Benai, son of Mattaniah, a Levite, who was a descendant of Asaph. He said, Listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. So they put themselves before the Lord to seek the Lord. And then here's the word of the Lord. A man of God steps up, a prophet, and he says, this is the word of the Lord. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army. And then here it is. For the battle is not yours, but it's God's. Can I get an amen to that? In this spiritual battle, God has allowed us to be where we're at in life. No matter, you know, if you're having some, uh, you know, if the battle is your workplace, if the battle is your health, if the battle is family, whatever your battle is, God has allowed you to be there. He's going to use you in this battle. But guess what? The battle's not ours. It's not ours to fight. We are fighting battles that do not belong to us. And we are spinning our wheels and we're going around the mountain over and over and over. And God just wants us to set ourselves to seek him. And then when we get the word of the Lord, act on the word of the Lord and obey. But right off the bat, let me give you the carte blanche word of the Lord. The battle's not yours. And we can rest in the fact that he is going to fight our battles. But where, what, what, what part do we have to play? He says, tomorrow, somebody say tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, march out against them. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeruel. But you will not even need to fight. So he's telling them again, you don't need to fight. But position Somebody say position. Position yourselves. Stand still and watch the Lord's victory. Now, when I first read this, I thought, man, I know the battle's not mine. I get that a little bit. And then God's going to use me. How does he use me? And then he says, stand still and see the Lord's victory. You know, sometimes we just got to get still. Stop going, going, going. Stop doing, doing, doing. And get still before the Lord. You know, it was Elijah that heard the voice of the Lord and said it came in a still, small voice. Sometimes we're, I mean, it's good stuff. Driving down the road, blasting Christian music, praising and worshiping, getting you whoop, whoop on. But... Sometimes he just wants us to get still. So one of the strategies, we got to seek the Lord first. Seek the Lord. Second one there is get still. Stand still. Stand still why? So we can see the salvation of the Lord. It's not stand still and do nothing. He's going to show us. But, but stand still and quit trying to help God out. Amen. Seek the Lord, stand still. We're going to see the victory of the Lord. 
we got to take position. He is with you, O people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. It's the third time he said, don't be afraid. Sometimes I've got to be told over and over and over, you know, I'm still worried about, like, the surroundings, what's going on around me and everything. But he's telling me, he said, don't be afraid. The Lord's got you. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Here's key three. So we got one, seek the Lord. Two, stand still. Three, worship the Lord. Now, something that, like, really stood out to me in this is they worshiped the Lord before they knew the outcome. We don't worship the Lord and get all happy when he answers the prayer like we want it to be answered or when he comes through in my timing. It's like I get on my face, I get in a prayer closet, I do something, but I worship the Lord before I even know what the outcome is and how he chooses to work that that thing out, how he chooses to work victory. Guess what? He said um, he's going to work the victory in our behalf. He knows what's better for me way far better than I know what's better for me. So... I worship the Lord because what? He is good. He's faithful. I know that he's going to come through. I know that I know he's going to come through. He don't have to do it in Jonathan's way. He don't have to do it in Jonathan's time. But I know that he's going to come through. So I worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. We're going to read that in a minute. But, but he's good. That's enough. Guess what? If God never did another thing for us, you know what? He's still good. He's still faithful. It doesn't erase everything that he's done up to this point. But I can trust him. I worship the Lord this morning before I know the outcome of the battle. Then the Levites of the children, we're back there in uh, verse 19. Then the Levites from the clans of Koah and Korah stood to praise the Lord of God of Israel with a very loud shout. With a very loud shout. With a very loud shout. Come on, let everybody else around you know that God is good. Hallelujah. Come on. I want to almost say it like this, is my daddy can whoop your daddy, and I'm going to let you know that my daddy can whoop your daddy. So, so when I'm worshiping and praising the Lord, it's, it's, I want everybody to know how good God is. It's not just for me and me to, to hang on to. I know, I believe I know, and we'll experience even more of how good God is, and I worship the Lord because I know he's going to come through, and I know he's going to fight, and he's going to win the battle, and we're going to see a victory. But also, too, is your shout is for somebody else, too. Your praise is for somebody else, too. Your miracle is for somebody else, too. I was talking with another brother this past week, and we were just talking about signs and miracles and wonders and what God wants to do, and he's still in the miracle-working business. Amen. But it's not just for show. It's like it always turned others to Christ. It turned people to believe. So our shout is just to, it's for somebody else. We're going to point somebody else to Jesus. They're going to be like, what is that nut doing? Why does Sister Cheryl shout and yell and hoop and holler and all that? And I know her answer already because it's how good God's been to her. Amen. So he says, he said they worship the Lord. Um, they praise the Lord of God, Israel, with voices loud and high. Verse 20, early the next morning, the army of Judah went out. To the wilderness of Tekoa on the way to Jehoshaphat. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all you people, Judah and Jerusalem. Believe the Lord in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Stand firm. There's the fourth point there. Believe. Believe, believe, believe. Sometimes I gotta tell my believer to believe because I get distracted with the circumstances. But I believe that God can do it. I believe that God will do it. That's right. No, it says, in that way you can stand firm. Look, if you're in this thing and you're wondering if, if, if God's real and if he can come through, whatever, 
I'm telling you what, get with God, get with somebody that could just encourage you and lift you up and, and build your faith because I'm going to tell you, in, in, we get further into this thing if the Lord tarries. It's like, we got to, you know, he wants us to believe that we stand firm now. We don't get to where, we get to a point to where we, we're, we're wavering and, and we're going to maybe believe in God and maybe go all in with Jesus or, come on, you know what I'm talking about. He wants us to believe I have to have his help to believe. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Let's not get concentrated on what we can see with our eye. We believe in faith. Come on, the same, uh, I'm like Pastor Chris, I like some stories sometimes, just so it's very, very relatable. But there was a, um, about five or six years ago, I read of a young minister as a youth pastor, and him and his wife, they've been trying to have a baby, trying to have a baby, finally she got pregnant, they were going to have a baby, and the baby was born, and it was going to have to have surgery. They wasn't really thinking it was going to live, and they just got along with God. And he said, the word of the Lord spoke, and he said, look, he said, you trust me with your salvation. Like, you trust me, you believe that, like, you know, when you die, you're going to come home, be with me, you're a child of mine. That same faith is, I can raise that baby. Now, the point being is just, like, we got to just believe. It's a faith thing. On my fleshly days, I, I, can't, I can't wrap my mind around it sometimes to have the strength or the tenacity to even, if that's what you call it, to believe. It's like, it's by faith. We have to believe by faith. If you haven't had God come through you before, if you've made it this far and you just feel like, man, I hadn't seen the Lord do nothing, I'm going to tell you, keep, keep coming a few weeks. You'll see because there's enough people around here that could testify. I've seen some of them testify probably to a gas pump. God's been so good to them, right? I mean, it's like, it, and I can believe in a God that's faithful and so much bigger than my intellect. Amen? So we believe in the Lord your God. And it says, you will stand firm. Verse Verse 21, after consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor or in the beauty of holiness. So here's another one that blows my mind. So this is an army. You're faced with the battle. I'm faced with the battle. And the Lord's given us strategy. We're worshiping. You know, we're seeking the Lord. We're worshiping. We're sitting still. We're waiting to see God move. And then he tells Jehoshaphat, he's like, uh, before you send the dudes out there with the M16s and the cannons and all that, he goes, I want you to get a choir together. Just get some singers together. Get you a good worship team. Get you a 100-member a uh, mass choir. And you're going to go out there before the foot soldiers, to fight this battle. He doesn't really say it right here, but I'm sure Jehoshaphat at some point in time, like, I believe you, God, but this is a little weird. Um, we're going to sing them to death? Now, maybe you could take that one or two ways, too. It's like, were they that bad of singers? I, 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 I don't know. You know, like hitting those high notes and all the glass is breaking. I, I, don't, I don't know. But the Lord, he, said, he sends a word of the Lord. He said, Appoint the singers to praise me in the beauty of my holiness. Man, I'm telling you what, I've been in this place, I've been in other places, where I get in the presence of God and you get to singing before the Lord and it doesn't matter what you think, you can sing, can't sing. Look, I, for years I wouldn't even get up in front of people. Seriously, I was shy, I was full of fear, whatever. Now I don't care what it sounds like, it sounds like a frog for all I care, but I'm singing to the one in the beauty of his holiness. It's not about my voice, but there's something that the Lord uses in us lifting a voice and just declaring the beauty of, of his majesty. Let me tell you the difference between worship and praise. Worship, we're just kind of going into the holy place, and we're really about, you know, how good the attributes of God. We're worshiping for that. But then also, too, praising him for, like, what we talk about, past victories. When we, when we, when we sing unto the Lord, uh, we're singing about, like, just 
this, who he is, God creator. Um, I mean, you've been good to me. You've answered this prayer. If you never did another thing, God, I, I still, I just, I sing to you. I sing about the, the, the old hymns that we sing. Singing, uh, those are usually birthed out of like real life uh, experiences of what God has done. And so we, we get before the Lord and we sing in the beauty of his holiness. And guess what? Somewhere in the midst of him fighting the battle for us and in that spiritual realm, the things that we're not computed to, to really know and understand everything, right? It's a spiritual battle. I don't understand it all. I just understand the one that's in control of it all. I try to. And, and he tells us to sing to him. So Jehoshaphat, he's like, okay, I got the choir. I got the worship team. What do we do now? It says, it says they're praising him in the beauty of his holiness. Um, this is what they sing, this chorus here. Give thanks to the Lord. He is faithful, and his love endures forever. Come on, just stop for a few seconds. Stop for a few seconds, and let the Lord bring to remembrance of an area where he's been faithful. Too many to, na too many to name. His faithfulness, maybe it's in the area of, of provision. You ain't had nothing but a, a can of beans in the cupboard. Some of us have been there. Or you've been down next to nothing. But God has provided. He's either put you into contact with some people. He's brought uh, this. He's brought that. He's, give, he's a provider. His faithfulness. Amen. And then his love. We could sing about his love. What's that song? I could sing about your love forever. I will sing of your love forever. Man, God, God shows his love in so many ways. But just the fact of, let's, let's, let's deal with the obvious. He died for us. Come on. He died for us. We're on our way to hell. No plan B. Jesus had to come in. And he provided a, a sacrifice. His love for us is why we get to do this. There's so much we could say about his love. But we sing, it says the chorus says, we gave thanks to the Lord his faith, because of his faithfulness and his love that endures forever. Sometimes we don't need to know a big fancy prayer. We don't need to know all the latest songs, whatever. We just get alone and start singing to God. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your love. And then you start naming the ways that he just brings to remembrance of, how, God, how you've showed yourself, how you've been faithful, how you've loved me in spite of. God, you sent your son to die on the cross knowing that I was still going to be a, a, a no good for nothing until I came to you. Man, it's just the love of God, the love of the Father. So it wasn't some big extravagant worship team. It was just praise the Lord. Your mercy endures forever, your faithfulness, your love. Verse 22, at the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting amongst themselves. So then Jehoshaphat sees this, right? He's done put the singers out there, the worshipers, and now he sees them. They're, all they're turning on one another, and he's going. It's a it's pretty good plan so far. You know, I should have I known this back in First and Second Kings. I could have sent some singers out there instead of us going out there with the swords and the chariots and the horses. But he's like, okay. So they start fighting amongst themselves. Um, they turned against them. Then they turned against their ally, allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrived, they came on scene, ready to fight. You know, They've listened to what the Lord said. They've heard the word of the Lord. They've worshipped before they knew what was going on. They're singing, and then they come over the hill to fight. And it says, they saw dead bodies lying on the ground as far as the eye could see. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. Come on, let me tell you something. When you're in a fight, when we're in this fight, this spiritual battle that we're in, and we let the Lord fight our battle, and he gives us the instruction, and he gives us the strategies, and we obey and we walk out those strategies, guess what? He takes care of the enemy. He doesn't leave a little foothold for the enemy to creep back in. He takes care of the enemy. The old song said, the enemy, I took back what the enemy stole from me. He's under my 
feet. Come on, give God praise. He's under our feet. Not a single one of the enemy had escaped. King Jehoshaphat and his men went out to gather the plunder. They found vast amounts of equipment, clothing, other valuables, more than they could carry. There was so much plunder, it took them three days just to collect it all. Look, when the Lord takes care of our enemy, he's going to restore what the enemy stole, right? So maybe there's been some past battles and some past fights, and I haven't passed the test. I haven't gotten it all right all the time, and maybe not gotten some of it right none of the time. But what the enemy has taken from me, the Lord's going to restore it and turn it around. And he said it's going to be more than they could even hold. So they didn't just win the victory. God took care of the battle for them. But like then he turns around, he blesses them. We're going to continue reading here in just a second. But somebody needs to hear that too. It's just that the fact that you feel like maybe, maybe you're, you're okay with where you're at. And God's growing you, moving. But there's some things in your past and some, some things that need to be redeemed. God is going to redeem the past. He's going to take what the enemy has stolen. In this case... All the Moabites, the Ammonites, everything that they had. But he's not just going to give it back because that's the kind of God we serve. He's going to give it back more than you can contain. You can hold it. You can't, you can't fathom what the Lord's going to do on the back side of the battle. The battle is, it, you know, they're real. And I just want to reiterate, but God wants us to have victory. Victory. We don't walk around in defeat. He wants us to have victory. He's going to take out the enemy. He's going to redeem and give it back and give it more than. Let's continue reading. I'm going to be closing here a second. Um, On the fourth day, they they gathered in the Valley of Blessing, which got its name that day because the people praised and thanked the Lord there. It's still called the Valley of Blessing today. I want to tell you that you'll go back and you'll have a place to where like when you get that victory over whatever it is in your life and whatever that thing looked grim up to a certain point, that right there is going to be the valley of blessing because it's going to be a place of remembrance again of how God was good and how God was faithful. And he was good and faithful and because he fought the battle. Everything in that place, the, the valley of blessing, pointed to that like no man could take credit for that. No man. We couldn't put our hands to it and touch it and act like we did something and we got the victory. He's going to have a place, and maybe you have already have some places there, the valley of blessing, to where you know that you know it had to have been God. Amen? That right there, it, yeah, go ahead, give me praise. It's, it's like we... An ultimate no-no for us is to take credit for what God has done and doing our life. If you get a victory, and when you get a victory, not really if you get it, but when you get the victory, we turn that praise right back to Him. The worship that we praise God and we sung to God before we knew the outcome, when we do get the outcome and we see His hand at work in our lives, we turn it right back to praise Him because it's God, it's you that did it. I didn't do a thing. There couldn't have done, I couldn't have done it. On my best day. Then all the men returned to Jerusalem with Jehoshaphat leading them, overjoyed that the Lord had given them victory over their enemies. They marched into Jerusalem to the music, the harps, the trumpets, and they proceeded to the temple of the Lord. When all the surrounding kingdoms heard that the Lord himself had fought against the enemies of Israel, the fear of God came upon them. Let me tell you something. Back in, if you, I think it was verse 2 where we started reading this, there was a fear of the Lord because it was, it, uh, there was a fear... Because Jehoshaphat was afraid. Now here, after the battle, there's a fear of the Lord. But it's a fear of the Lord because of how good God is. I don't ever want to touch what you've done, God. I went from being scared to where I reverent you, God. And I know what you can do. Like, if you experience that, and you experience victory in your life, and you look at the way God did things right there, you're like, okay, God, you could win a battle by just sending some singers out there, uh, I don't want to mess with you. Like, there's a holy fear. We need a holy fear to reverent back to the church. Amen. We're not scared of God, but we're reverent, and we know that, look, he is God, 
And he can do what he wants to do, right? So I don't just flippantly act like I'm Mr. Big Shot or get too big for my britches, as Granddaddy used to say. It's like, he's still God. And there's a respect and there's an honor because he is God. And then right there, closing right now, it says, So Jeho Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. When this battle's over, when the battle and the fight that you're going through is over and you get the victory, guess what? He's going to give you a place of rest. Because I'm going to tell you, before I clicked in and, and, and all this computed right and I started believing God, I was working pretty hard in my flesh to, and I was tired. Right? But when I submitted to him and what he wanted to do and how he wanted to work out the victory in my life, he's going to give us rest. And there'll be rest here. I mean, I know there'll be rest in heaven. Amen? It was uh, somebody not told maybe in Pastor Chris, he just so wore out, or somebody I was talking to, I think it was Pastor Chris, he said, I'll I just have sleep when I get to heaven. There ain't no rest. Sometimes it feels like you're going, 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 but God's going to give us rest. A rest in him, a peace the past is all understanding. And so I pray this morning. I'm going to have just a, a, a closing prayer here. But if at the end, I'll, I'll stick around here just for a few minutes. Um, we can't get a good keyboard to play around here while I'm speaking. So, no. <laughs> but no. Um, let me tell you, who, you, you're going through a fight. And you, and you need victory this morning. Whatever that fight looks like, you need victory this morning. I'm going to pray for you. But then also, too, if you want specific prayer, I'll stick around uh, up front. Brother Leon, anybody that wants to help me. And then we'll just, we're going to be people of victory. Amen? Amen. Victory. Victory. <laughs> victory. Let's all stand, if you will. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, God. We recognize you today, God, as, as God. Father, you go before us. And Father, whatever we may be going through right now, Lord God, what's, what battle or fight is, is right in front of us, God, the here and the now, and the, what's in us in the natural. God, let us first and foremost, God, know that it's not against flesh and blood, God. Father, it's a spiritual battle, God, but Father, we lean into you. God, thank you for the strategies that you give us to seek your face, God. May we be people that seeks your face. First thing, God, no plan B, God, Jesus only, Lord. God, may we put ourselves before you to hear your voice and, and, and what's the next step, God, and what we do and where we go. Father, we ask that you uh, help us to stand still, God, so we can hear that response and that still, small voice. God, may we worship you. God, may we worship you before we know the answer. God, because of how good you are, God. Father, we just I pray over everyone that's here today. Lord God, that we be a people of victory. God, that you fight our battles for us, God. Even in the, in the part that we play, God, we recognize you fight the battle, God, so we know you are the ultimate victor, God, and we lean into the victory because you have won the battle for us, God. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way in our lives from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Be blessed this week. Remember to pay for, keep continued prayer for the pastor. Um, just to, I believe he'll come back really, really refreshed and, and jazzed up and ready to go again next week. But be blessed. Have a good week.